Tutorial Tuesday and I'm excited for this one. We're gonna go over vector images. I'm gonna show you guys how to take a photo from unsplash.com and turn that photo into a vector graphic using Illustrator. So we're gonna be using Photoshop and Illustrator today. And yeah, I've made this video before, but I improved a few things and I simplified the process and I'm going to share that with you today. First, let's find a photo and then import that into Photoshop. We have two images that I just downloaded. I'm just gonna click both of these photos from my downloads folder and drag them into Photoshop. And what's gonna happen is it's going to open them. I'm gonna go ahead and double click on my background layer, which is going to unlock it. And now we have an unlock layer and we could try to use Adobe AI to remove the background. So I'm just gonna click remove background. It should do a decent job and it really did pretty easy. Every little thing you see that's like in between the feathers, we could just fix with the lasso tool or pen tool. That was the hardest part. All we have to do is add a white background layer. So I'm just gonna create a new layer real fast and then hold in shift, press backspace once again, and under contents, change it to white. Now we have a white background. Let's drag that below everything and let's press Command A. If you're on a PC, it's Control A and let's just uh, copy it. So if you don't know your shortcuts, you could go up to edit, copy merged, and then edit paste special, paste in place. Now we have a flat image with our white background and the bird, which is perfect for this effect that we're gonna be using. But before we get into that effect, we have to press D on our keyboard, which is going to set our foreground to black and our background to white, which is what we need for this effect to work. Now we're ready to begin. So let's go up to filter, filter gallery. So let's toggle all these off for now and select just stamp. If we ever run into issues like I am right now with the tail kind of getting lost, all we have to do is go up to filter and then camera raw filter. Let's bring out some details real fast in order to make this bird kind of just pop a little bit more. So we don't want to raise the contrast too much. What we really want to do is raise the exposure and the shadows to bring out some of the details, lower the highlights just a little bit, and even add a little bit of clarity back into the image, which is going to help this effect really thrive. And that's pretty much all we have to do right there. Press OK. And if you really wanted to, you can always add a stroke around the bird. Sometimes that will help. But let's try it this way real quick and see if this fixed our problem. So I'm going to go back here and we just want to turn on stamp only. And let's see what happens. So as you can see, we have way more detail on this, the tail now versus before where it was basically getting lost and we didn't want that. So now we can play with the light dark balance slider in order to bring out some more detail or take away some details. So I'm actually going to let the detail kind of stay there and then raise the smoothness up just like a little bit, maybe to like four. And that's just going to get rid of some of the little textures that really aren't going to stay anyway. And that's pretty much good to go. Now that that effect is applied, all I have to do is press Command A on my keyboard or Control A if you're on a PC, and then Control or Command C to copy it. I have a 10 inch by 10 inch document already set up, so now I'm just gonna press Command V or Control V and paste this in place and it will be pretty large for this document, but that is completely fine. Now that I imported this into Illustrator, all I have to do is head up to Image Trace, which is at the very top right here under Help, you just click that once. And if you want to refine this further, all you have to do is click on the image trace panel, which is located to the left of the tracing results next to where it says view. This little panel right here will allow you to bring out some more detail and also take away detail depending on your preferences. So what I want to do is actually go down to advanced and I'm just going to mess with all of these different settings a little bit. You don't want to go too crazy with these but now we can use this to remove noise and we can also lower it all the way to one pixel to bring out the noise. And I really like that noise in there. I think it looks really good. So yeah, play with these settings and even mess with the threshold. Depending on where you put the threshold, that's gonna determine how thick your lines appear. So if I go more, watch how thick this gets and dark it gets. And if you go less, you're gonna bring out some more of those details in the feathers. So I would go somewhere in the middle, maybe like 115 is pretty good. This is going to change image to image, so don't think that these settings are going to look the best for your photo, okay? Now that this is ready to go under options, I'm just going to check ignore white. By selecting ignore white, it's going to get rid of the white background, which is why it's called ignore white, which is going to give us a perfectly transparent background, and this is going to be ready to do whatever we want with it, like whether it's printing or whatever, you know? So let's go ahead and click expand at the top. So this will only look good on a white background or any light color, right? So let's say we want to add it to a black background. All we'd have to do is duplicate this layer. Really easy, guys. You just duplicate the layer, and on the Pathfinder options, under Pathfinders, you just click Merge, and then on the left, you just wanna go under shape modes and then unite that, and it's gonna fill it with black. And you can use this as an underbase now for a black background. So check this out. I just made a new artboard with a black background, and if I take this shape that I just created, which is basically just the eagle that's filled completely with black, 
and I basically overlay it on top of one another. You also want to make sure it is centered to one another. You could just send that black background to the back like so, make it white, and that's pretty much it. So now we can actually throw this on any color background, and if you wanted to, you can even add a stroke on that white background to make it pop even more. So I can fill this stroke with like white, let's say, and then add that to our black background, and check this out. Pretty freaking cool, huh? So by creating that white underbase with a white stroke, we were able to make this eagle pop out of any color now. So we can print this on a white shirt, a black shirt, or any other color, and it's gonna look really, really good. So that is how you do it, guys. It's really that simple. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. I'd be more than happy to help you guys out more. Don't forget to watch this video, guys. I redesigned a top-selling Amazon shirt that sold over $42,000 worth, and I used Kittle. I didn't even use Photoshop. I completely ditched it for that video. So definitely check it out. But my name's Charlie Pangas. I'll catch you guys in the next one, all right? Peace.